It's been a wild ride again on world financial markets. Overnight, European and US markets suffered their biggest fall since the height of the global financial crisis in 2008. The Australian share market didn't dive as much, but the Aussie dollar slid well below parity. Fears of a recession in Europe and the US are part of the reasons for the fall, but there are signs too that China is slowing, and that has big implications for Australia's economy. Stephen Long reports. The worst share market meltdown since Lehman Brothers collapsed in 2008, triggered by a dire assessment of the US economy. Freefall, the markets plunged. The fear gripping the financial markets about the state of the global economy. Disappointing data from China, an iconocrat stating the bleeding obvious. I still think that a double dip recession for the world's major economies is unlikely, but my confidence in that belief is being eroded daily by the steady drip of difficult economic news. The world is in a danger zone. In 2008, many people said they did not see the turbulence coming. Leaders have no such excuse now. In 2008, there was a much wider path for recovery. They don't have as much maneuvering room now. They don't have as much munition. The IMF boss talked about the three R's that would save the world economy. Repair, reform and rebalancing. But investors fear the other R word, recession. The odds of a recession in the industrialised world have got to be at least 60-40. I think it's more likely than not. You might say that the market is worried about uh, September 2011 turning into uh, something that we had in uh, September 2008 uh, with uh, Greece basically playing the role of uh, Lehman Brothers. The numbers tell a story of fear and speculation on disaster. The cost of insuring against debt default in southern Europe was already huge, but it soared in the past month. Spain up 20%, Portugal nearly 30%, Italy almost 45%. And for Greece, the demand is now payment up front. Markets are pricing in a banking crisis, and that's driving banks towards insolvency. Key French banks have seen their shares fall by more than 60% this year amid fears about their debt exposure. And money's searching for a safe haven, but what's safe? US government debt apparently, despite America having its credit rating cut. Overnight, the return on 10-year US Treasury bonds fell to sensational lows, levels not seen since the 1940s. There were two drivers, investors pouring in money in a desperate search for safety, and the latest move by the US Central Bank to try to kickstart the economy, known as Operation Twist. Ben Bernanke and the Fed are selling $400 billion of short-term government debt and buying $400 billion of long-term debt in an attempt to drive down the cost of credit in America for businesses and home buyers. What the US Federal Reserve and Bed Bernanke did this week with its Operation Twist was to implement a policy that was going to drive down government bond yields. The 10-year government, 30-year government bond yield, he wanted to push them lower because in the US, they're the interest rate benchmark from which mortgages and a lot of uh, business loans are priced from. Stephen Kakoulis has held senior roles in global investment banks and was until recently Prime Minister Julia Gillard's advisor on macroeconomic policy. And he's sceptical about the government's view that the federal budget will or should stay in surplus. If the economy grows as the Treasury and RBA are thinking, of course we should be running a surplus. If we do, however, have this global fallout impacting on Australia in a much greater extent, if we do find that perhaps in the beginning of 2012 we see unemployment approaching you know, five and three quarters or even six percent, which now looks to be a, at least a realistic possibility, then of course it's going to be all bets off on the budget. China has been the bulwark for Australia, but it too is now slowing. China, which has been the, uh, the engine room of growth and the main saviour of uh, the world economy and certainly Australia over the last few years, is also starting to weaken. The numbers that we're getting out of the manufacturing sector are now pointing to some form of contraction. Commodity prices are falling as Chinese demand weakens, as is the Aussie dollar, now below parity against the greenback as speculators dump the currency. Greece still has Europe's backing, kind of. It is important to underline that uh, the European Union is not going to abandon Greece. 
an uh, uncontrolled uh, default uh, or exit of Greece from the euro area would cause uh, enormous uh, economic and social damage uh, in Greece. As fall descends on the northern hemisphere, there may be more falls to come. Hmm, no retirement yet. Stephen Long with that story.